Yeah, Spencer Rattler. It, you were, we're not even. I mean, let me let me preface this by saying I think Chandler Morris is a really really good quarterback. I watched him four times. He's in high school. not Bryce Young though, and that's okay. So I, I was going there. I was going exactly in that direction. But I was about to say, if Spencer Rattler's not at Oklahoma, guess where Bryce Young's at? He's at Oklahoma right now, and that everybody in the country knows that. Spencer Rattler is not at Oklahoma. Bryce Young is on campus right now in Norman. It and that's, is that's a fact. That's that one that's the, also you and I know his dad. Back to a tremendous weight, I think, being placed on Rattler and to a degree Riley, because we're at a moment that is particularly interesting and insular to Oklahoma in that we get to see what it looks like for Riley to have the time to develop a guy that he picked out of high school and then ride with him. We thought it was going to be Austin Kendall. He brought in Jalen Hurts. You know, Kyler Murray, he brought in to compete with uh, Mm -hmm. Robinson and whoever he was recruiting in 2018 at the time, I think Cam Rising. You know, Baker Mayfield was here when he got here. But Rattler also not just needs to win, he needs to outperform Bo Nix, Sam Mm -hmm. Howell, Jaden Daniels, and of course... Bryce Young, because that is what you bet on. You bet yeah. on him not just being good. You bet on him being the best of two classes. Yeah. In a no, year no, in okay. which I'll remind people that Texas took two quarterbacks. And yeah. Casey Thompson, who many of us believe is a great quarterback, was also a part of a two-quarterback class. You mm-hmm. know, there's there's not a lot of room for chance. error here. Even if you think that Tanner Mordecai can play, we would all agree that Spencer Rattler's upside is larger than Tanner Mordecai's. Right. And okay. we would also agree that Bryce Young's upside is larger than Tanner Mordecai's. Mm-hmm. I also think that it's fascinating to know that Bryce Young went to USC before he went to Alabama, right? Or was going to go to USC before he went to Alabama. Mm-hmm. And you look at the other 2020 quarterbacks in the class, guys like DJ Uyangulele, right, who was up there with him as being one or two as the best quarterbacks. And that's a 5'10 quarterback that everybody was talking about. And I've I've heard Zach, Zach Poff told me this, Max Preps editor. He thinks he could be better than Kyler Murray as a, as a quarterback. And I'm going, you're going to make some people unhappy. But on the flip side, that's what Lincoln Riley passed on to get Spencer Rattler in the boat. Mm-hmm. So you're saying Rattler could be better than anybody else that Riley has coached. And that man has had three Heisman finalists and two Heisman winners and two number one overall draft picks. I'm just saying it's a lot of pressure on Spencer Rattler, even by normal Oklahoma football quarterback standards. Yeah. No, no. I, I, you, you gave me a lot to unpack there for just a <laughs> second. So, all right. Um, the Casey Thompson came rising. We're, we're going to go back to that and why Tanner Mordecai is at Oklahoma real quick because – I know this for a fact. Obviously, you know my relationship, who I work with, CBS Sports Radio, all that stuff, who my co-host, uh, that last hour I'm on. Um, everybody does. but uh, For those that don't anyways, know, walk it Charles out with crayon. Yeah, it's Charles Thompson. It's Casey Thompson's death. There you go. Okay, so I, I, I knew this when it happened. I wasn't allowed to report any of it, blah, blah, blah. During that time with the camerizing and the Casey Thompson situation – Casey Thompson was on the fence. Oklahoma, Casey Thompson was Oklahoma's number one quarterback by far. Cam Rising came in. He was offered after Casey, and he committed, and Casey wasn't ready. They even called. They even called Casey and said, hey, Cam Rising's going to come in and commit. We're not going to accept it if you'll commit. And Casey was honest with Coach Riley and said, hey, I'm not ready. You know, I'm not ready. Yeah, I, I, I probably will, but I'm not ready. So they went ahead and took Cam Risey because you have to take what you can get. It's a five-star quarterback. You know, it's a guy from the West Coast that you probably wouldn't have that opportunity now. Obviously, Kyler Murray shows out, scares the living crap out of Cam Rising. He decommits. He goes, he watches Sam Ellinger play, and he goes, and that's not a knock on Sam Ellinger. It's just he's not like Kyler Murray. And he goes to – Texas. Well, that was after Casey committed to Texas because Cam Rising was at Oklahoma at the time. So he goes down there. They talk him into running, you know, the offense that they ran at Ohio State. He's a perfect fit, all that, blah, blah, blah. Um, During that, uh, after Cam Rising decommitted, 
Casey almost flipped Oklahoma three times. <laughs> so it was very close, but, you know, it never happened. He stuck by, stuck by his word, which you have to give the kid credit for that. That was very hard for him to do, by the way. And Oklahoma ended up with Tanner Mordecai, who in turn had so many offers because he ended up carrying Waco Midway all the way to the state finals by himself. If you watch that game, he's all they had. They were garbage around him, and he carried them. I mean, he was ridiculous in high school. And he deserved the offer. He deserved all that. Having said all that, we're talking about Spencer Rattler. I can already tell you that everybody on campus down there basically knows Spencer Rattler is the starter, and I would probably include Tanner Mordecai in that. I mean, it's a, it's pretty much an understanding that Spencer's the guy. Now, they're going to battle it out. But you and I both know, RJ, that battles are whatever. When you have a guy like a Baker, when you have a guy like a Kyler, you have a guy like a Jalen Hurts, you have a guy like a Spencer Rattler, they're going to be the starter. It doesn't matter what the battle is. Those are your starters. And, and you said something I thought was interesting about not having this quarterback. Well, I know that Baker was here when Riley got to Oklahoma, but y'all were, he tried to get him at East Carolina. So you could basically say that he chose him, I mean, for all intents and purposes. And he tried to recruit him out of high school too, if everybody remembers. So, I mean, it, it was one of those deals where – uh, he, he chose Baker. He just thought any, he, he luckily got to develop him for four years. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that, that was something Riley did. I think he developed Baker. If they're going to go back and say he developed one person, I mean, you could say he developed Kyler too. Cause he had him three years, right? He had three and he had four. I know they were transfers. I know they weren't out of high school, but they weren't the same player without Lincoln Riley. Is that fair to say? I'm thinking. I think it's fair to say. I also think winning the commitment and the signing out of high school. That, I, I, I agree. I agree. And I agree that's more that. the point that I was making. Like, yeah, okay, he recruited Baker, you. but Bill Bedenboe recruited Deontay Savage. <laughs> he was at OU when he got <laughs> here and he really wanted to have him. You know, like it sometimes yeah. it works out that way. And Deontay turned out to be pretty good for. Well, Bill I mean, Bedenboe. but that's also Deontay was already projected to be pretty good. Yeah. Which is sure. why Deontay picked Oklahoma. Right. Uh, Baker true. Mayfield said, no, I'm a power five quarterback. I'm not an East Carolina quarterback. I'm, sure. all I'm saying, I, I think there's I think both arguments are correct. If Does that make sense? No, no, no. I'm okay. with you on that. I, I got you. No, I'm, okay. I got you. I get what you're saying and you get what I'm saying. That's right. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's fair. No, um, I, I just think I just think overall Spencer does have a lot of pressure on him. But you would think he would be one of the one people, one quarterback, few quarterbacks, I guess, would be the proper way to say it that can handle that pressure because he's just that type of dude. And I, I, I spoke to Spencer on numerous occasions during that, uh, our week down in Atlanta when we got the chance to, and he, he was so open about, uh, just how much Jalen hurts meant to him. I mean, he, he said it and, and I, I, it gets, it gets on my nerves when people blast Jalen hurts a lot. And I, I've got, in a debate with uh, the Prairie Report. I mean, you're going to get a shout out on the podcast. Say, bud, uh, we debated on this this past weekend about how he thinks, you know, Jalen Hurts is bad. He wasn't any good, blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I've had multiple sources tell me that Jalen Hurts, they had to do things differently because he wasn't Baker and Kyler. That is 100% true. But they're not going to the playoffs without Jalen Hurts, number one. Number two, um, there, the things that he laid in the foundation that he brought, and you and I have discussed this before, some of the stuff he brought from Alabama to Oklahoma, that type of stuff, and what he did in the maturation of Spencer Rattler will be seen. And this is straight up from a really good source. This is verbatim what they told me. You will not see what what Jalen meant to this program until two or three years down the line when people actually go back and reflect and see how much of a change it's actually made in Oklahoma's system. And that's I, that to I, me was very telling. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you man. can add. The, the, the system is whatever the quarterback needs it to be, and that's how Riley no, no, has I'm built the system. No, I'm not talking about system. I'm talking about the program system. Yeah, right? I mean, we could say the same thing about Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray. <clears throat> it's quarterback. You're gonna have yeah, an imprint. But, yeah, if you don't have an imprint as a quarterback, that means you're a crappy quarterback. But he brought in things that they weren't doing is what they're talking about. And, uh, and, that, and I'm saying that that's what you do, right? That's part of uh, it. 
if you're bring, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to, I'm not trying to bag on Jalen Hurts. I am saying that he did exactly what he was supposed to do short of win the playoff and, and win an actual mm-hmm. championship game. That, I mean, can't really ask for much more than he was doing, and he played to the limits of his abilities. Yeah. I agree with that. I also am not going to cape for Jalen Hurts as being, you know, one of the best things to ever happen to Oklahoma or Spencer Rattler. He's the guy that oh, got I'm the job. Oh, I'm not saying that. Well, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying you are, right? But I, I see both sides of this argument, which is, you know, one, the guy wasn't a quarterback that you're used to having in Oklahoma. He was a different kind of quarterback, not a bad quarterback, just different. <laughs> and I'm not prepared to say that, oh, you want not reach the heights that it did last year without – Ooh. Him, I'm saying that I'm. Yeah, man, you can't prove a negative. I think Austin Kendall would have been a great fit for that that team last year. Ooh, given the same that's tools. a hot take, man. Your OU fans are going to come after that one. <laughs> well, I mean, they usually do. <laughs> that's a hot take. And, and and I'm supposed to be the homer, right? Um, that's a, no, that's a hot take, man. I mean, you can't just because of what everybody saw with Austin Kendall at West Virginia, they're gonna go, oh, no, nah, I don't give think Jalen so Hurts the parts that Austin Kendall had. Tell me how many games he's gonna he's gonna win. Uh, I don't know. It ain't gonna don't it probably as many as Austin Kendall. I don't know. I, well, 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 there you go. Uh, and that's kind of the point. You don't know, uh, and and we don't know. We do know Jalen Hurts ran four six at the Senior Bowl. Yeah, that's what I said he was going to run. Uh, Jay, uh, okay, he's going to run at the Combine. I pray Joe Burrow runs at the Combine because I want my pizza. Well, he already ran a 4-6. Jalen did, not Joe. Oh, no, okay, yeah, yeah. So we know what Jalen ran, and I said right. that's what he was going to run. And you, I, what I say, he would run a 4-8? Uh, no, I, we just, I just said Joe Burrow Oh, I said he'd faster. be faster. Yeah, okay, okay. okay. Oof, man, you got yeah, that's a, man, you you better hope he runs a 4-5. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. 4-5-9 will do it, buddy. 4-5-9 will do it. Yeah, right, right, across, right across that line, huh? <laughs> so uh, that's a good place to leave it. Wanted to, be for, wanted to go for about a half an hour. And okay. we did that, and I think it's a good discussion. It's good to hear your voice again on the podcast, Brandon. Um, we'll talk yep. again pretty soon. Yep. All right, man. All right. Deuces.